When I went into G-Rank, I knew it was going to be a challenge. Not only do I have to deal with even more key quests, I also have to find a way to get a G-Rank armor set while still maintaining the Mind's Eye skill. While some might think the G-Rank Seregios gear would be a good option, it has a skill called Steady Hand. This skill is basically Mind's Eye and Razor Sharp mixed together. While this would be nice to have, it sadly breaks the rules and we can't use this armor. So I had to use the MH4U database app to make the armor set that I need. The key is to maintain the Mind's Eye skill. I also have Tremor Resist which helps and Max Artillery which will be a lifesaver. Now that I have my G-Rank set decided, I have to get those armor pieces. That's gonna be the hard part. On top of that, I have to upgrade my Arachnoscale Charge Blade. And to max it out, I'm gonna need the G-Rank Nursilla parts and even worse than that, Camellia's parts. And not to mention the amount of decorations I'll need as well. This will be quite the undertaking. I've never gotten very far in G-Rank in this game, so this should be very exciting. So the first thing I did was go after Aceltus in the G-Rank Expedition. When I fight it, we already come across a big problem. We take a lot of damage from Celtus. Having high rank gear going into G rank is gonna be rough, so we have to get decent armor in the meantime. I start by farming Celtus for the falls, as we'll need them along the way. After a bit of grinding, we obtain our Celtus falls. This won't do too much to help, but it'll at least do for now until we get the set we need. Onto the key quests. We hunt a desert Celtus in a map that it's not even supposed to be in. You'd think this would be in the Dunes map, but whatever, I guess. As I was hunting it, a Ray Jang showed up. Thankfully, he didn't interfere as much, and as soon as the Desert Celtus went down, Rejang showed up again and became Apex. Not something I expected, but I at least completed the quest. I decided to craft another Arachnoscale. You'll see why in a bit. We take on Ash Ketchawacha, and with some of our high rank armor, this was hard because I was taking a lot of damage and even fainted. But once I got into the swing of things, this wasn't so bad. Next, I had to face Berserk Tetsukabra. This one was difficult because, once again, our high rank armor. Berserk does a lot of damage with his exploding rocks. And there was a frenzied normal Tetsukabra that invaded which caused me to faint numerous times. The first attempt was the worst as that Tetsukabra would go wherever Berserk went. It was annoying to say the least. But after being more careful with this one, he was captured even with our sharpness being so low. Damio Hermitar wasn't very hard. He wasn't any different than when we first fought him in part 1 of the challenge. I did misplace a trap and had to wait to use my other one for it though. Next was not one, but two Cephadromes. They were annoying because they were doing surprisingly high damage. This quest was tedious without sonic bombs. I decided to test my luck with Tiger Stripe Zamtrios, and I gotta say, it was my first time hunting him. It had moves that differed from the normal species, and I loved the design and the color scheme. Sadly, he was too strong for me to deal with, so I had to come back to this one later. But when I was fighting Tiger Stripe Zamtrios again, it was painful. I just couldn't get past it. He was doing too much damage, and I was frustrated to no end. So I had to step back and think. I needed a G-Rank set that has slots and allows me to maintain Mind's Eye. After many hours of grinding Nursilla, I upgraded the Arachno Scale Plus to the Arachno Scythe. But when I looked at what I needed for the final upgrade, I now have to farm Nursilla even more. Well that's just great. Before we do that though, we go and farm for Elder Dragon Blood. The best way to farm it easily is from Darren Moran. This was quite tedious, but I managed to do it and get the Fencer Jewels needed for our armor set. And after a bunch of grinding, we finally have the armor set that'll at least help us survive most of G-Rank. I'm finally able to beat Tiger Stripe Zamtrios with a bit of patience and my newly obtained gear. I can only imagine it'll get harder from here. Our next target was Tidal Najarala. It was actually my first time hunting this one, and some say he's annoying, but I personally think he's not that bad. However, despite that, I ended up carting due to instances I just couldn't get out of. And on top of that, I died several times from really bad timing. But after the third attempt in under 10 minutes and two feints, we barely get by with this one. I ran out of all my healing items when I captured it. Because of my armor's defense, I was in need of heavy armor spheres. I looked it up and the Frozen Seaway has a pretty high chance of giving some just by mining. So I went to mine at the Frozen Seaway and got a decent amount of armor spheres. Unfortunately, there wasn't a Harvestor quest, so I had to pick one that requires slaying 25 Zamites. This took a while. And somehow, when I mined some materials, I got a charm with fencing plus 5. That was a good find. So now I have to plan a different build. We hunt both Rathian and Red Kezu, and they weren't really all that hard individually. But if you don't have Dung Bombs, fighting them both is a nightmare. I took out Red Kezu first, and then Rathian when I had 10 minutes left. Next was Plume Damio Hermitar. He wasn't that hard. In fact, he was actually quite easy. He did spray me with water a bunch of times, but I was still able to capture him with little effort. All that's left now before the G2 quests is an urgent quest for Seregios. This one wasn't actually bad, but of course it fainted me twice as a result of me being cocky. But after a little bit of patience, this one is captured. 
Our first hunt in the G2 line of quests is Shrouded Nursilla. I gotta say, for the first time hunting this cool looking spider, it was actually quite fun. Even when my sharpness hit red, it wasn't that bad. We then proceed to hunt more of them to get our next weapon, the Shrouded Charge Blade. We'll need to get Black Gravios materials to upgrade it more, but we'll work on that later. Next was G Rank Gravios. This one was... painfully long. The fight dragged on so much that I ended up losing all of my healing items, and I even had just under 5 minutes left, but after an educated guess, I decided to try and capture it, and it worked. I was so relieved by this one. After that, we take on both Azur Rathalos and Tigrix. They both weren't at all hard, mostly because when doing quests that involve more than one monster, they have less health than normal. After Azur goes down, I then proceed to take down Tigrix not long after. The next monster I had to take on before the next line of G2 quests was Zenogre. Boy, I was not expecting this one to be a massive pain. Because of my armor's weakness to thunder, Zenogre did so much damage that he might as well be arc tempered at this point. His thunder slams hit so hard and his ranged thunder attacks did more damage than was acceptable. I even had to switch up my armor a bit just to survive while still maintaining mind's eye. And after many, many attempts, I finally take down Zenogre. Why does Zenogre give me so many problems in these challenges? Why? After that pain of a quest, we hunt Diablos. Diablos wasn't too hard, but I had to be careful not to get hit from his charge attacks. I'll have to keep farming him to get the materials I need to craft the last piece of armor. After doing a fair amount of grinding, we now have the final armor set. Artillery God is for file damage and Guard Up is for a monster that I'll mention later. And of course, we have the most important skill we managed to maintain through the run. Let's take on the rest of the game. We hunt a Black Gravios and he wasn't that bad to take on with our new skills. Although I did run out of healing items and I captured him with 10 minutes left. Not surprising with our decreasing sharpness. However, this was a massive pain to farm for our next upgrade. I would keep on hunting Gravios to get the Coma Sacks, but my RNG was so bad. But after so much tedious farming, I finally got the Coma Sacks and upgraded our Shrouded Blade. After that, we hunt Brute Tigrix, and even though his roars are so awesome, he was doing so much damage that I was considering farming for more Armor Spheres. But after our third attempt, we managed to take it down. Next was Desert Celtus Queen, and I gotta say, she wasn't very hard for my first time fighting her, although she did run me over Deja Vu style. But other than that, it was smooth sailing. Then I had to deal with another duo quest. This time it was Sprachidios and Stygian Zenogre. I was not looking forward to this fight. Sprachidios wasn't the problem even though he hits hard. The big problem was Stygian Zenogre. Dealing with the Dracophage bugs and the Tail Slams was a huge pain. This was due to the amount of damage he was dealing and it was not fun. I had a good amount of Dragon Resistance but it didn't matter as he wouldn't give me an opening no matter what I did. I failed at this quest many times and on the last attempt I barely was able to capture it. I must have had less than 3 minutes left. On top of that I ran out of healing items. This one was indeed painful. After that, we hunt Black Diablos. She was actually pretty easy despite my decreasing sharpness. Although when I placed the trap down where I thought she would sleep, she went to the next zone. So after waiting a while for the trap to despawn, we captured Black Diablos. Now we need to do an urgent quest to access the G3 quests. Chaotic Gormagala. Despite how hard he was hitting, I was actually enjoying the fight. Mostly because of this epic theme song. However, I did fail this quest twice not because of the sharpness, but because of how much damage he was inflicting. After a fourth attempt, I managed to get him down with one feint left. That was really fun. Our first G3 quest was Camellios. He wasn't hard considering the one I was facing was smaller than normal. However, there were times when he cornered me with poison and killed me. This happened twice. Now despite that, I really enjoyed this fight. Many people think he's annoying, but I digress. This fight is still fun even though he was stealing my stuff from time to time. I did manage to repel it but I wanted to slay it because I need his materials. Time to grind. After a good amount of grinding from Camellios and Nursilla, we now have the final upgrade for our Arachno Scythe. The Bellabox Scythe. And of course we need Kushala parts to upgrade our Shrouded Blade. And speaking of Kushala, he hits so hard even with our armor being close to maxed out. This is one where I have to stall for a bit to repel after doing a good amount of damage. Glad I didn't make the same mistake like before. And after a good while of grinding Kushala, we now have the final upgrade for the Shrouded Blade, the Kernobok Scythe. This will be useful as well as Bellabok. We go for Teostra and this one was hard. The explosions were doing a lot of damage and I carded too early most of the time. But after several tries, I was able to beat it. 
I thought I would have to repel this one, but I'm glad I didn't have to. After that was the last quest before the final boss, Ukonlos. This actually wasn't that bad. Sure, he would chase me down like a shark a bunch and stomp on me. But other than that, his beam was easy to dodge and getting in those discharges was no problem. Now we come to the final boss. I was told by a fan on my Discord server that this quest is nearly impossible to beat without a certain ammo. Demolisher ammo. Without this, taking on the final boss would spell doom. So I had to do the following quest to obtain this ammo. Tiger Shark, Spider Study, Escaped Convicts, and last but certainly most stressful, Lab Partners. This should help with the final battle. Let's do this. This was my first time going against Gogmazios, the one monster that stands between me and finishing this challenge. I wanted to experience it for the first time before actually taking it serious. And I learned quite a lot. Guard Up is useless here as the explosions he does cannot be blocked. And after many trial and error attempts, the chat and I decided on the Black Guard. It has 3 slots and decent enough overall sharpness and damage to get the job done. Plus it has 35 plus defense which is nice. We also need to change up the armor a little to get better skills due to the Guard Up's lack of use. The skill we go for to replace Guard Up is Guard Plus 2. With this we'll be able to counter attacks much easier. See what I did there? And after farming Ruby Basarios for a good while for the wings, we get the Iron Wall jewels we need and get the Guard Plus 2 skill. I will say getting the guild quest to farm this properly was brutal. Then we go for Gogmazios once again. The plan was to ignore the cannons entirely as they wasted more time than was necessary. Plus they missed most of the time. Everything was going according to plan until time was close to running out. Then I had to abandon. This happened several times. Next attempt we went in with changes to my inventory. The chat and I decided to go with more bombs as they do fixed damage and we could craft more on the go. Then the chat and I thought that Feline Weakener worked so we tried that. Turns out, it doesn't work in the slightest as Gog's size is fixed, therefore no changes to his health. So I didn't realize this until I failed the next attempt and here's how that went. Ugh, this is the run! Whatever... Whatever I do, this is the run. Oh no! No! No, no! No, no, no! Mm. Okay. Gosh. Eh. Bombs have to finish it. I'm... Uh. Oh, come on! Come on. Why is this not- We had Feline Weakener! Come on, this has to be it. Come on! No! No! No, there's no time for the restraint. No. I thought for sure that we had it. We could have won if it weren't for the second faint, I'm sure, but regardless, we still couldn't beat him. So what I had to do after that failure was evaluate my equipment. Considering I rely heavily on file damage during red sharpness, I needed a weapon that did just that. And no, it's not what you guys think it is. The Acantor Charge Blade has low sharpness and even though the attack and affinity are nice, even if I did want to go for this weapon, I can't max it out until I beat Gogmazios. Yeah, I bet most of you didn't even think about that one. So there was only one other option, Diablo's Charge Blade. While this weapon may have negative 20% affinity, it more than makes up for it for its high green sharpness and a lot of raw damage. And on top of that, it was super easy to get and max out to the Sarah Sediment. But it only had one slot, so I had to get some quests done to obtain the Ignactor Vambraces X. These allow me to still maintain the skills needed to get the job done. And here's the actual final set. Since I decided not to stream my challenges, 
I decided to do this one offline, but keep my face cam on so you guys would see my reactions for the fight. I'm more concentrated this time and I'm more prepared. I decided to eat for Feline Bombardier as even though Feline Pyro seems nice, I looked into it and all it does is make the large bombs into large bomb pluses. This is the inventory I went with as it's what chat recommended when I was streaming the challenge. Let's see if we can pull this off once and for all. Fire! Booyah! Time to finish this once and for all. Oh my goodness. Yes. In case you're wondering, I'm just being a little quiet right now because I'm trying to take it easy still. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Whew. Finally, after making these changes from my failed attempts, we have proven that it is possible to beat Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, especially G-Rank, without sharpening.